Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions. Today I will be attempting to, at least, convince you to actually read Dune. I am jumping on this bandwagon now because the movie came out two days ago worldwide. I saw it on Wednesday. On Wednesday. And now that everyone's going to be talking about it, I thought it was kind of the best time to make this video. I'm not going to make this annoying in the sense that I just <laughs> sit down and tell you for the 50th time why you should read Dune. I actually had some friends and <laughs> people in my family write down questions who have never read Dune. What they wanted to know about the story before I recommended it to them and that is how I will try and do this video. There is 14 questions. I will answer all of them to the best of my ability and if you have some of these questions too maybe it's going to be kind of useful to learn the answers to them all in one video. So I didn't feel like just sitting down and trying to convince you from my point of view. I wanted to get people who don't know anything about it or are interested in it or are not even interesting in, interested in it to ask questions about it and see if I can answer in a way that would make them interested. So let's get into the video. Question number one is which part of the book is the most slow paced? Now that's a bit of a complex question when it comes to Dune because I would say, and I'm a person who loved it, that the whole thing is slow paced. Like of course the finales of the books, we're going to be talking about primarily Dune 1, but I mean the entire trilogy could be, this could be applied to the entire trilogy. So I would say the whole thing is slow paced. The finales or the climaxes are always a bit faster, but I think as a book it is definitely slow paced. Even when I was loving it, it's not a book that I wanted to binge. You just sit down and read a bit of it and then come back to it later. So definitely slow paced. If you're someone who really cannot deal with slow paced books at all, I would not even give this a try. Because not only is it slow paced, but it's very scientific in the beginning in a way that's annoying to a lot of people. So the fact that it is slow paced doesn't really help in that regard. So if you really, really hate slow paced books. I would be a bit careful when giving this a try but that's the answer to that question. I will try and answer another one in this clip and then do another one so I don't make it too long. Which character did you hate the most and say something about their personality? Hate the most? And I didn't read this these questions in advance so if I'm thinking a little bit that's why. I just took the paper put it on the shelf and said I would look at it when I actually sat down to film it. I, <laughs> It's not a book where I really, really loved or hate characters. I liked some more and some less, but I didn't really have that strong opinions about particular characters. I don't remember hating anyone. I mean, Bar the Baron, I guess, but I didn't really hate him because without any spoilers, at some point he gets very interesting so I can't say that I hated him. If you get emotionally attached there are of course people who hurt the characters you like so you could hate them but in my personal opinion there wasn't a single character that I like, I like viscerally hated now that I remember him or her like I want to punch the shit out of them there isn't a single character who comes to mind. They just all had their own kind of nuance. So I wouldn't really say I hated a character. That's, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know how much I love to dump on characters that I absolutely despise. But in Dune, not a single one comes to mind that I like hated. Question three, does the book have romance? And if yes, is it slow burn? It has a romance. And it's definitely not slow burn. It, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's, for people who were writing in the last century but every single book that I loved but I read in that that was old and written by men mostly the romance wasn't the strongest aspect of it even if it was there I wouldn't say I necessarily hate the romance that's in this book and there are several but in the first book only one is relevant there is a romance not that important. You could say that it is that important, but considering that it's not that well written, 
I wouldn't really call it important. I didn't pay attention to it that much, but there is a romance and it is definitely not slow burn. So don't go in expecting a lot of development in that regard. You need to be someone who likes very quick romance where you just have to suspend your disbelief and trust that they are in love now, even though you don't really see it. But that is, again, this entire video is just my personal opinion, so you can take that with a grain of salt, but no. There is a romance, it's not that important, because it's not that well done. But if you like it, then good for you. Definitely not slow burn, not even a little bit. Question four. Is there a main bad guy, or are there several? <laughs> well, I thought there was a main bad guy in book one, but I was wrong. I was wrong, I'm doing my best not to spoil anything, <laughs> which is why these videos are a little bit hard. But no, there is not one main bad guy. That We will leave it at that. The next two questions are kind of similar, so I'm just going to dump them together. And to be fair, people that I asked the questions really know me. So is it similar to Star Wars and how is it similar to Wheel of Time and how? I talked about its similarities to Wheel of Time way too many times. I will just mention it again in case this is the only video of mine where you see me rant about Dune. Very similar to the Wheel of Time in the terms of Robert Jordan really paid homage to Brian Herbert. <laughs> Brian? No, Frank. Brian is Frank Herbert. Brian is the son. He really paid homage to him. I mean, the entirety of the Aiel and their ways and a lot of how it's described is pretty much the Fremen. So there's a similarity with the Dune and the purpose of the main character is sort of similar in a way. I think that's that's all you need to know about Wheel of Time and Dune and without spoiling both. But Star Wars, even though they're both sci-fi, I'm not sure I would compare them at all. Aside from inter interstellar travel and different planets, I am really not sure I would compare Dune and Star Wars. People say that George really took a lot of stuff from Dune or a lot of inspiration from Dune, but I don't see it. Maybe that's just me, I just don't see it. I adore Star Wars and I loved Dune, but I don't even look at them in the same, in the same way. Dune is very environmental and philosophical and while Star Wars is also philosophical in so own way it's not that similar the only parallel is the space stuff because I think that George drew a lot from the samurai and their culture and their ways and stuff so I don't really see the comparison with the Dune aside from the fact that they are both really popular sci-fis and they are similar in the way that while they are sci-fis, they come really close to being a fantasy. They almost read like fantasy. If they were not in space, it would be pure fantasy. But aside from that, yeah, I don't see any other similarities. You can let me know where, <laughs> where you would put Dune and Star Wars in terms of being similar, aside from the fact that they are sci-fi. And I know a lot of people say that George took inspiration from Herbert, but I just don't see it. So you can feel free to correct me, Correct me, but nothing comes to mind. This one is a little bit of a tie-in with the Wheel of Time question, but are the Bene Gesserit... <sighs> Could the Bene Gesserit be one of the Ajas and which ones? I mean, because of their hate of men, or not really hate of men, but trying only finding women useful and trying to breed only women. I would say they could pass for the Red Aja, but I don't think he really drew a parallel there, so I wouldn't really say the Bene Gesserit would be the Aja. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say so. Which three characters are your favorites and why? <laughs> I am going to be cliche and just say the Atreides. I mean, Paul, Jessica and Alia. The Atreides. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I have to be cliche and say the Atreides. Now, I love 
Leto the second and Ganima a lot too but I have to say the mains <laughs> Alia is definitely my favorite as a character and as her arc and who she is and what she can do and her eventual arc I really really loved reading that she was definitely my favorite and I was a little upset they cut the movie at such an awkward time <laughs> Because I was really looking forward to Alia. I knew she probably wouldn't be in part one, but I'm really looking forward to Alia. Aside from her, it will be Jessica and Paul. I mean, Paul is the main character. Obviously, you fall in love with him. Because if if the main character isn't written well, <laughs> then a lot of things fall apart. Because a lot of the time, the main character is kind of the point of the whole story. So Paul, I love him. And Jessica, simply because she is an icon. But I think she would be my least favorite of the three. I love her. But she is sort of set in her ways in a, in a way that her children aren't. So Alia, Paul, and then Jessica, the Atreides. But I'm sorry, I don't have a more interesting answer for you. We're like, oh my god, my favorite characters are <laughs> Dr. Yue, Gurney, and Stilgar. I'm sorry. Question nine. Does the book have religious or philosophical elements and do they relate? do they relate to something in the real world i mean yeah it's it's a sci-fi which means it's in the future of course it's real world religion like he mostly i think deals with the muslim religion i'm not sure if he incorporates anything else because i think the messiah aspect i think every religion has a messiah <laughs> Not that I would know, but I think so. So, of course, it relates to, like, real religion. Philosophical, very. He, his entire books are pretty much philosophical and environmental because he was worried about that and he just liked writing philosophically, I guess. So, yes, there's a lot, a lot of that. So, if you don't like that in books, I wouldn't recommend this because he really writes about it. Like, that's the main point. And that's why I didn't like the movie, which I didn't even say once in this video. That's why I didn't like the movie, because they... I understand it's very hard to adapt the philosophical aspect of it, but that's kind of the main point of the book. So with that missing, it was just a very beautiful but very hollow <laughs> three-hour movie. That's all I really have to say about it. Very, very beautiful, but extremely flat. So yes, there is a lot of <laughs> real-life religion parallels and a lot of thinking in terms of the pre-science. There's a lot of philosophical thinking. Question 10. Is the only magic in the book the Bene Gesserit magic and what kind of magic is it? I wouldn't really call it magic because this is a sci-fi so he does technically make it scientific. It's not magic but they do have abilities where they can affect other people using a specific type of voice and uh, control their bodies with their minds completely like no poison can really hurt them they can decide if they want to conceive a child and what gender they could be like just for instance so i wouldn't really call it magic i think he intended it to be <laughs> mental control of natural things but the voice could definitely be magical because like yes it needs to be a certain intonation so it could control other people which you could call hypnosis I guess but it's very close to magic again I said Dune for me read like fantasy I was scared that I wouldn't like it because I don't really like sci-fi but it was very close to fantasy so there is no magic but you could interpret it as magic if you if you chose to and the next one is a little bit <laughs> difficult but how would you get your friend to read the book if your friend liked magic again this ties into the last question i wouldn't really look at it as magic but how i would get a friend to read it now that's that's a stupid question in my opinion i didn't that's why i didn't look at it before so you can get my genuine reactions that's a bit of a stupid question because i would never ever force anyone to read any single book because if i have to force you to read a book you're probably not going to finish it and it's going to feel like a chore i am just here to let you know that if you like certain things that I like, you could probably enjoy this. <laughs> I'm not here to force you to read Dune because why would I care if you read Dune? But how would I convince someone who was interested? Well, I would say that it's a very expansive sci-fi 
that also somehow deals with very personal topics to everyone. And a lot of the introspection that the characters have is very relevant to today, especially because he was so worried about the environment and overpopulation and everything. There's also the religious aspect. And I think that if, if you're interested in, in a sci-fi that eventually is more philosophical than scientific, you could enjoy this. And also, I would definitely convince you to, how, how would I convince you to finish it? I would say that if you're not feeling it at any point, don't give up on it. Just put it down and come back to it later. Because there, maybe not book one, I read book one very quickly, but with the rest of the books, I had very long breaks. I didn't hate the book at any point, but you just fall out of the mood because it's not really easy reading. It's a bit taxing, <laughs> especially with the philosophical things and his writing style. It's very taxing. So I would, the best advice that I can give you for actually finishing it, if you are interested, if you're not hating it, but if it's tiring, just take a break and come back to it. Book three, Children of Dune. I think I paused reading. I stopped reading that like in January. I just picked it back up in June or even July and I finished it in a couple days. So the fact that you want to take a break doesn't mean that you don't like it. It just means that you need a break and that is absolutely okay because it's not the kind of book that I could binge. So definitely take a break if you need it. It doesn't mean that you don't like it or that you won't ever finish it. You're just not in the mood. You're just not in the mood for this right now. That is exactly what I did <laughs> with book three. I read books one and two very quickly. But yeah, there are just periods where, you're, where you are not in the mood for this kind of nonsense that particular day. And that's the best thing that I have. If you're struggling with it, but you're not exactly hating it, so you don't want to DNF. We have a couple more questions. This video is already long and if you're just here as a tourist who has no interest in reading Dune, I am sorry. Question 12. What's your favorite scene and why? I am, it's again, it's going to be very cliche, but there's a reason why it sticks with you. I love the Gomjabar scene. I love that scene. I was so looking forward to that scene in the movie. <laughs> there's a reason why we all love it. Because you get to the point of everything the point of the Bene Gesserit the point of Paul there's the litany against fear which I love and it's written written on the hardcover on the back the Gomjabar scene it's just a classic for a reason and I I will give you one thing the one time that I got chills in the movie was the Gomjabar scene and when Jessica and Paul used the voice in the ornithopter that's when I got chills <laughs> so the Gomjabar scene is very very cliche but there's a reason why a lot of people love that scene and why it's in every single adaptation that they did. How many points of view does the book have? Now this is a bit of a tricky question because here I am making a recommendations video without remembering all the details. Like I read Dune and Dune Messiah last year, literally a year ago. I read Children of Dune, what, four months ago. How many points of view? I want to say a lot. I mean, mostly it's the main character's point of view, but there's a lot of points of view. But I would say that the main thread is the Atreides. But there's a lot of points of view. The villains get a point of view. Random characters get a point of view if it's relevant. Yeah, there's a lot of points of view. But I wouldn't say it's that jarring because you sort of get thrust into it from the beginning. It's not like you have the entire first book is from Paul's point of view. And then all of a sudden the second one has five points of view. I think he sort of spaces it out evenly so that you get used to it pretty quickly. 14. What do you think about the world <laughs> where they use where they use words like Duncan and Paul and Jessica? Did that bother you? Now again, this is the last thing that I have to say. His writing style is very taxing. In the beginning, I have to like make a point and say that it's in the beginning. He uses a lot of random words like gestalten and I mean the characters are called Duncan, Paul, and Jessica. <laughs> of all the things, Paul and Jessica. So yeah, he wasn't really a linguist. Not a lot of the things were intentional or if they were intentional he probably wanted to make it a bit more palatable to people in the 60s when they were reading a science fiction novel and he just wanted to make it 
I guess easier to read by making the characters called Paul and Jessica. He uses a lot of random words that that can annoy you in the beginning. Like it, I'm not gonna lie, it took me 200 pages to be really used to it. But I think he improves in that regard later. I don't recall it ever bothering me in the rest of book one and books two and three. You just have to get used to it. If you never get used to it, I wouldn't really continue reading. But if you do, then it'll be okay because I don't think you will either pay attention to it anymore or he just stops doing it. I don't recall ever having a problem with the way he writes after like 200 pages of book one. But yeah, if there's one thing I can complain about, it's the fact that <laughs> I would be wary of recommending this book to anyone if they are not really patient or really interested because the writing style is one that's sometimes or very often hard to get past. It did bother me, so I can't really lie. It kind of did bother me and it's a little weird, but all the main stuff that you have to remember, he will repeat enough times and all the other stuff you can just forget. That's how I look at it. You can just forget everything he said if he doesn't repeat it enough times for you to remember it. And I think that is it for the questions. If you have any other questions, but I think I covered everything, I would really recommend reading the book. Now I will talk about the movie for a little bit just so you can get a perspective if you're someone who's watched the movie and maybe you are looking to read the book. I didn't like the movie and I'm someone who read the book not because I think it was a bad adaptation but because it was very 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 flat as I already said in a three-hour movie it seemed to me like 15 minutes they didn't cover any of the important topics but we got to meet all of the characters but not enough so you don't really care what happens to any of them unless you've read the books because all of these characters already mean something to me I think if you didn't read the books, I'm not sure how you would be even a little bit emotionally invested in anything that happened. It's a stunning movie. They put a lot of money into it. There's no one is disputing that. It was stunning. I went to the pre-premiere to IMAX. It was stunning. But I got home and just continued studying. I wasn't disoriented at all and I was watching a three hour movie in IMAX. So it was just very, very flat. It didn't stick with me even a little bit. I feel like I've already forgotten most of it, which is not really good for a movie like this. So I think they kind of missed the entire point of the book or they weren't sure how to adapt it. So they just focus on the visual aspects. So if you were interested in the movie, I definitely recommend reading the books. If like the concept seemed interesting, if you liked the characters, read the books. It's way better. <laughs> And if you're someone who just read the books, I wouldn't necessarily say it's necessary to watch the movie, but if you love the books, I think it's pretty cool to see it adapted in a way that's visually stunning. Yes, they didn't hit the main spots, but it is just so beautiful that I think it's worth it just to go and see it once because you're going to have all that emotional context and you will, I think, enjoy everything that they made with their billions of dollars. <laughs> and I would say that none of the characters really bothered me because to be honest, there wasn't that much of them. Paul and Jessica are the only ones who are pretty much in the entirety of the movie and they didn't bother me at all. I love Rebecca Ferguson and Timothy Chalamet, surprisingly enough, grew on me. <laughs> but so yes, if you watched the movie, enjoyed it, I would recommend reading the book if you're interested because it is way better. And if you read the books and want to see the movie, I would recommend it if you just <laughs> make sure to know that it's not like the books. It's just a very, very, very expensive visual masterpiece. <laughs> That's all that I have to say on this topic. I have answered all the questions that my friends and people I hounded about this asked me. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you it helped you in some way. I wasn't that articulate because I made this a Q&A kind of. But if you have any other question, leave leave it down below. I will happily answer it. Now that Dune is out, everyone's probably talking about it. So I am always open to talking about it because I love it. And that is it for this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.